We know you did a lot of training before you even started filming. Tell me a little bit about what that involved. It involved um, uh, stunt fighting, horse riding. We learned to fight like dwarves. We learned to ride horses like dwarves. We learned to communicate as dwarves. Uh, we learned to walk like dwarves and talk like dwarves. And we, uh, it was hilarious actually. I'll just tell you a funny story. Um, we did a lot of working on the movement of dwarves and also working together as a, as a team. And so one day we did that, but we went outside of the building where we were, we were training in, and we did it outside in a park area. And it was in a public area, so a footpath. So you've got 14 grown men sneaking through the trees, acting like, I don't know what the public must have thought. Because <laughs> people looking at us would have thought, what are those guys doing? You know, we're sneaking around through the trees and we're pretending to light campfires and <laughs> pretending we're being chased by orcs. And gosh, it was really, really funny. Yeah, we did. We did um, a huge amount of training for it. Did you ever think when you were sneaking around at that point, oh my God, we're going to get arrested in a minute? <laughs> I did actually sort of think if they, they might, you know, somebody might the police might arrive or the me even worse the media <laughs> but what most importantly it was a, a chance for us to kind of to get to know each other and work together as a group and um, yeah we did that for two and a half nearly three months before we even started rolling the camera I know I know uh, we uh, they would introduce bit by bit um, like they would introduce our weapons so we learned to fight with our particular weapons they would introduce the pieces of costume uh, the funny thing is we spent so much time actually learning to kind of warp with a, a, a much heavier kind of uh, base. Because dwarves are quite are very earthed as people. And so we had to kind of walk, uh, we, Terry Notary, who's a fantastic um, movement coach, would teach us it had to walk like we had a cannonball in our stomach, like really low and down. So we spent months doing that and then one day they brought in the boots that we had to wear and the boots are like huge. And the boots did all the work, work, all that work for you anyway, so we didn't actually really need to do it all, but don't tell them because, you know, it was still fun. Now, you mentioned weapons there. You got quite attached to one of your weapons, didn't you? Literally attached. How was it having that axe on your head? <laughs> that, well, I, that, was a, that was an amazing moment, actually, when we first saw our, um, the, our depictions of our characters, you know, and we, it was an amazing day. Uh, we were all sitting together and they had... Um, portraits of each character that they were bringing out and we were just going oh my god because they're all so incredible and then mine came out and I had the axe on my head and for about a second I thought that's weird and then I thought that's fantastic because it gives me as an actor a whole lot of things to work with so we ended up introducing a whole lot of things into to Biffa's character to do with the axe like he zoned out and I did a whole lot of research on, on the effect of something like that, that, that kind of um, injury might have. And from that came the idea that I'd speak in Kuzdul, like it's like a, almost like a foreign language syndrome. So it, was, it gave me a whole lot of things to hook around as an actor. And it's an orcax, so there's a history. I've been through some terrible stuff and so I'd, my backstory that, you know, we'd all create sort of stories for ourselves, my backstory is that you know, my family was in a terrible, terrible fight, attacked by orcs, and I lost a whole lot of people. And, you know, so he's a bit of a sad character. But as the film goes on, Biffa kind of finds himself a bit. Now, you mentioned as well the foreign language syndrome there. Of course, you talk in sort of dwarvish, don't you? I do. How did you find doing that? Was it tough to learn? Well, we have dialogue coaches all the time there. So uh, it was tough to learn. But uh, because the funny thing is that they actually were very, very strict about doing it right even though it's actually a pretend language. <laughs> so, all the time, on set all the time, we'd have a dialogue coach, and if you said anything wrong, they'd come, oh, you can't, you've got to do it right, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you say, oh, no, it's made up. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, yeah, uh, cool, bel cool, you know, you'd have to say, you know, that means mighty dwarf. It's a secret language, though, so don't tell the other dwarves because they'll kill me if I go around speaking it. Of course, you work quite closely with Andy Serkis. You also work quite closely with um, Stephen Hunter and also James Nesbitt as well, didn't you? What was it like working with those guys? Oh, well, listen, we were like a brotherhood. We were like a family. And when you go through so many different experiences together with a group of people, you do form a very special bond. You know, and so, um, like, when we came back, when we came back to filming this year, we'd been away... 
Oh, look, eight months, maybe even more, ten months. We'd actually stopped filming last year and then we came back to do another block, which we finished about three months ago. But the day we came back, it was just like nothing. You know, like it was just like an overnight thing, like that ten months just disappeared like that. And it was just like being back in the fold, in the family fold. You know, our trailers were in exactly the same place, the makeup bus was in exactly the same place, all the same people were there. It was like Groundhog Day. It was hilarious. Yeah, no, we did, we formed a bond. I and mean, what else, you know, because we just had so many adventures together. It's funny because the adventures that we had together as a group of actors are just like the adventures that the characters in the movie have together. They go on this journey because we did all the stuff for real, you know. All the barrel stuff, well you have to see the next film actually, I can't tell you about the next film, but you've, the trailer's already out, so yeah, the riding in the barrels, it was um, an incredible experience. Of course, as you mentioned there, we've just seen the trailer for the next film, Desolation Smoke. What do you think fans can look forward to most from that second part of the trilogy? All I know is, from the little bits I have seen, it's, it looks like it, is, it ramps everything up to another level. And Peter Jackson is a genius. And all I can say, because people keep asking me, they say, oh, what's it going to be? What's it? I think it is going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all unfolds and the story unfolds. I'm looking forward to seeing all our work on the screen and see how, what they do with it, you know? And you mentioned Peter Jackson, of course, though. What was he like to work with? It's the first time you worked with him, wasn't it, on the first film? Uh, he is a, um, at the heart of it, Peter, is a, an artist. And he is a creative person. What's wonderful about working with somebody like Peter Jackson is that he, he brings an ensemble cast together. Like, um, but he is, like, it's the talent of the man is incredible. But really it's not the fact that he is, um, it's really the fact that he is a creative personality. And that's the most exciting thing and it draws people to get, that kind of personality draws thing, people together. Happened in Lord of the Rings, they formed a special bond. It happened to us, we formed a special bond. And it's because he is a very, very talented artist. Finally, what was it like, was one of the guys who is based over in that part of the world filming there and then welcoming a cast from all parts of the world over as well? Well, what was great is discovering the, our, your own country and rediscovering pieces, because we went to places that were just incredibly beautiful places. And, you know, and then we did stuff like really got into barrels in a real river and we just had so many adventures, but it was, it was very exciting to actually f feel proud of your own country like that. And the way it's depicted on the screen, it really is Middle Earth, you know, our version of Middle Earth. It's New Zealand, really. But, you know, it is Middle Earth for all intents and purposes. But anyway, yeah, so bring it on. It's going to be an exciting ride, and I just hope people just go and see the film and enjoy it for what it is. Brilliant. Thanks so much for talking to us, William. Really appreciate your time. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm really loving it here. It's great. Lovely people. Thank you. Thank you.